Hi everyone, welcome back to my class. This is Romana Ali. I hope you all are fine. In today's class, we are going to discuss about the topic synapse. So before starting the topic uh, synapse, let us recall. Uh, let us recall about the topic nerve impulses which we have learned in our last session. So we know that nerve cells are present. Here the dendrites are present. One extension can be seen that is our axon and axon terminals will be there. We know that in the dendrites some channels are present that are called as mechanically gated channels through which the sodium enters due to the external pressure these channels they would get open. What do we call these channels? We call them as mechanically gated channels right. So these mechanically gated channels they get open because of the application of external pressure. When they open at the time the sodium will enter into the cell right and when the sodium start entering into the cell it will cause the depolarization of the cell. So once the depolarization of this region is going to happen then this will stimulate the depolarization of another segment as well. So the axon shows you the different segments and in that different segments the depolarization is going to occur after a period of time okay. So once the depolarization of the A segment starts and then after the depolarization, repolarization is also seen, repolarization can also be seen. Depolarization means entry of the sodium ions, repolarization means exit of the sodium ions due to the opening of potassium voltage gated channel. After the mechanically gated channels open, the sodium enters into the cell. Now, uh, this entry of the sodium stimulates the opening of sodium voltage gated channels. Once the sodium voltage gated channels open, the entry of the sodium starts and due to the entry of the sodium, the cell gets depolarized. That means the depolarization of cell can be seen. Now the segment A shows the depolarization and due to the opening of potassium voltage gated channel, it will show you the process called repolarization. At the time of repolarization of segment A, the depolarization of segment B started and at the time of uh, repolarization of segment B, the depolarization of C started. So step by step, one by one, the uh, segments shows the reactions called depolarization and repolarization. Now ultimately it will lead to the entry of calcium ions in the axon terminals. Here some channels are present that are calcium vo voltage gated channel. Due to the opening of these channels calcium can easily enter into the axon terminals and due to the entry of the calcium the synaptic vesicles that are found in the axon terminals this is an axon terminal here the synaptic vesicles are present and inside the synaptic vesicle chemicals are found this calcium when it gets entered into the axon terminal it will stimulate the synaptic vesicles so it will stimulate the synaptic vesicles to to releases the chemical out so once the synaptic ves vesicles get stimulated by the calcium they will start releasing the chemicals out of the axon terminals and these chemicals are called as neurotransmitter right so neurotransmitter can be released out of the axon terminals due to the stimulation caused by the release of calcium now after the release of the neurotransmitter this neurotransmitter can be taken up by another neuron cell. The signal is taken, the chemical signal can be generated and we know that the, uh, the space between the two nerve cells or the two neurons can be termed as synapse. So in the synapse you will be finding the chemical signal. The chemicals are released and that chemicals are transmitted to the another nerve cell. Let us see how many types of signals are generated in order to send the information to the central nervous system. 
Okay, so after the calcium enters into the axon terminals, it will stimulate the release of neurotransmitter. Once the neurotransmitters comes out of the axon terminals, then this neurotransmitter, this chemical signal can be taken up or it will be transmitted to another neuron, to the dendrites of another neuron. So, these are the dendrites of another neuron and this chemical signal can be received by the dendrites. In this way, uh, the synapse is a connection between the two nerve cells. Now, the nerve cell where the signal is getting generated, where the nerve impulse is getting generated, the axon terminal of the nerve cell where the signals, where the nerve impulses gets generated, that axon terminal is termed as presynaptic membrane. And the space between these two nerve cells or the neurons is termed as synaptic cleft. The space between these two nerve cells can be called as synaptic cleft. These are the different terms that you need to remember while learning about synapse. Synapse means connection between the two nerve cells. One nerve cell shows you the membrane which is termed as presynaptic membrane and the other nerve cell shows you the membrane that is called as postsynaptic membrane. The space between these two nerve cells is called as synaptic cleft. Now, when the chemical signal is received by the dendrites at the time the dendrites of another neuron or another nerve cell has some receptors on its membrane like this some receptors will be present so these receptors binds with the chemical binds to the chemicals or the neurotransmitters sent by the uh, previous neuron sent by the first neuron so this chemicals gets binds to the receptors these receptors receives the neurotransmitters and some channels are also present towards the receptors. What do we call these channels? We have already discussed in the last class about the types of channels. One is mechanically gated channel that opens due to the external pressure or due to the application of pressure. And another, channels, uh, another channel is voltage gated channel that opens due to the changes occur in the voltage. And the next one is ligand gated channel. So, this is called as ligand gated channel. This ligand gated channel opens up, ligand gated channel opens when the receptors receives the chemicals. So, as the chemicals are present here, as the chemicals are received by the receptors, this stimulates the opening of the ligand gated channels. So, this ligand gated channels opens and the chemical signal can enter into the nerve cell. The nerve cell can easily receive the chemical signals due to the opening of ligand gated channel. Once the ligand gated channel opens, again it would show you the depolarization of the cell. That means the sodium that is present in the interstitial fluid, it would start entering into the cell. So, this is what happens due to the opening of ligand gated channel and ligand gated channels can open only when there is a chemical received by the receptors present towards them okay so by the opening of ligand gated channels the sodium can easily enter into the nerve cell and once the sodium enters that process is called as depolarization of the cell here in the first neuron we have seen that mechanically gated channels open that causes the depolarization of the cell but now here in the second neuron, we do not see any mechanically gated channel because the depolarization would not occur due to the pressure applied externally, but it is due to the chemicals received by the receptors. So, firstly, the neurons will depolarize due to the opening of the mechanically gated channel, then synapse can be seen and after the synapse, after the chemical signal sent by the first neuron, the ligand gated channels open and it causes the depolarization. Once the depolarization occurs and at this point the depolarization will occur. This point the first the sodium would enter 
into the nerve cell firstly at this point once the sodium enters then it will further moves to the other segments of the axon which we have already discussed like a b and c these are the segments of the axon and uh, once the when the segment a shows you the depolarization and repolarization at the time of repolarization of segment a you can see the depolarization of segment b so simultaneous repolarization of one segment and depolarization of another segment would takes place and ultimately it would lead to the release of calcium that stimulates the release of neurotransmitter from the synaptic vesicles so this is what happens this is how the uh, signals can be transferred from one neuron to another another to third one and then fourth one likewise the signals can be transmitted and ultimately it will be received by the central nervous system in order to analyze that information let us talk about the different types of synapse so synapse is classified into two main types one is chemical synapse and the other one is electrical synapse we know that uh, the entry of calcium causes the release of chemicals and that chemicals can be received by another nerve cell another neuron so in this way the release of neurotransmitter and that neurotransmitters are received by the another nerve cell this causes a synapse a connection a chemical connection in between the two nerve cells and we call that connection as chemical synapse in some cases what happens the pre uh, synaptic vesicles pre synaptic membrane and post synaptic membrane is present right so in between the pre synaptic membrane and post synaptic membrane some gap junctions are present these are called as gap junctions through which the ions the positively charged ions and negatively charged ions both the types can move easily from one neuron to another neuron and this causes the electrical signal this causes the connection between this causes the electrical connection between the two different neurons so this uh, uh, gap junctions are responsible to transfer the positively and negatively charged neuro uh, and negatively charged ions into another nerve cell into another neuron this type of synapse is termed as electrical synapse you can see in between the neurons one is chemical and the other one is electrical chemical means the chemical connection you can see by the release of neurotransmitter right and electrical synapse means the electrical connection that is possible because of the presence of gap junctions so this is about the different types of synapse okay up till we were discussing about the normal conduction normal generation of the nerve impulse and the transfer of signals to the central nervous system now let us talk about one main type of conduction that is saltatory conduction in this type of conduction what happens here the myelinate we can take an example of myelinated neuron you all know that myelinated neuron or the nerve cell is a nerve cell that shows the myelin sheath over the axon so this is a sheath that is present over the membrane of the axon and this sheath shows you some nodes in between them and that nodes are called as nodes of ranvier and this is our myelin sheath okay in saltatory conduction the sodium ions that are present in the interstitial fluid they moves in in order to depolarize the cell right so the depolarization of the cell would occur firstly at this site the sodium ions will come will enter into the cell for the process of depolarization that uh, when the sodium ions enter we call that uh, condition as uh, depolarization right so this depolarization would occur at this site first then there will be no depolarization at this region because of the presence of myelin sheath because of the presence of myelin sheath the sodium ions would not enter at this point at this region then again a node is present that is called as node of ranvier at this point the sodium ions will enter into the cell and the depolarization occur then again a gap is present due to the presence of myelin sheath then again one nodes of ranvier is present through which the sodium enters into the cell and depolarization can occur so this is how 
the saltatory conduction can occur and it will shows you the direction of electric current. The movement of the sodium ions at the different nodes of the Ranvier present in the myelin sheath, this will cause the flow of current and the direction of electric current inside the cell will be opposite to that of the outside. If the current flows in this way inside the cell, then outside of the nerve cell it will flow in this way in an opposite manner. Okay? So, this is how the direction of electric current can be seen in a nerve cell that causes the saltatory conduction and saltatory conduction is a process by which the nerve signals can be transmitted more faster to the central nervous system than the normal conduction. So, this is about the topic saltatory conduction where we can see the depolarization at specific nodes in the neurons in order to generate nerve impulses. The next topic is refractory period. The next one is refractory period when a neuron receives the first stimulation after the first stimulation it will go in a phase it will go in a resting phase so refractory period is a time period in which neurons cannot be stimulated after the first stimulation it's very simple the resting period of the neuron when it is not going to send any signal when it is at rest after the first stimulation that period can be termed as refractory period so that's all for today meet you next class thank you